Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday evening, July 29th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information. We continue to watch potential Tropical Cyclone 9, which we're just going to call Future Isaias here because it is likely to become uh, a tropical storm, and Isaias would be its name. That'll probably happen at some point later tonight. We've seen some greater organizational trends today. We re retain a broad, elongated system, but less elongated than yesterday as this northern part of the wave has rotated around to a position more toward the north of the southern part and we're seeing a little bit more symmetry but it's still quite large and convective organization leaves much to be desired with a large hole in the middle this evening and two batches of new thunderstorms to the south and the north. So this is not the most organized system we've ever seen uh, but it is continuing to gain some structure over time and we have seen a little bit of intensification today in terms of the pressures in the northeast Caribbean. Uh, if we look at the zoomed in shot here, uh, if we take stock of the low level cloud motions, you can see the strong southerly wind on the east side of the wave envelope to the west of the Lesser Antilles. And then we can see the north wind on the other side of the wave axis uh, to the south of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. And if we continue to look around, we'll see that we have uh, periodically you can see the east-northeast winds near St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. You can see maybe some west-southwest winds showing up down here along 14 degrees north. And we've also had some observations that hint at some north-northwest bending of the flow right about here near this thunderstorm complex. And so this starts to give you an idea that we are showing some kind of circulation in the middle here, which we can't really see directly because some of these milky white cirrus are in the way and we can't see the low level cloud motions. We may be able to see them soon once this video ends. In fact, just as I'm looking at the last frames and recording here, there might be some southerly wind uh, right at that location. So we might be trying to narrow it down to somewhere in there. Uh, but it's likely not incredibly symmetric because we do have a strong trough extension up to the northeast. And if there is a circulation here, uh, it does extend quite a long ways toward the northeast uh, surface observations from the last hour show that pressures are quite low in the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, about 1,000, 5,000, 6 millibars, similar to the pressure observed at this ship south of Puerto Rico. And so the low here may be 1,003, 1,004 millibars. NHC does have it pegged right about where we were talking about on the satellite loop. And you can see the north-northwest wind here with that ship and the ship down here. So we're likely seeing a closed circulation Technically, we want to see it just a little bit more contracted to meet the definition of a tropical cyclone, but we might see uh, this uh, acquire the name Isaias at some point later tonight or maybe overnight. Um, so what's going to happen with this going forward? Well, the fact that it's still broad does still lead to some uncertainties, and uh, we still kind of have two pieces with this because this low, as it's forming down here, is kind of near the southern half of the wave. And uh, this has been stronger than models forecasted for several days now, and this has been the, the trend with the storm is farther south, farther west, uh, stronger southern part of the wave. Uh, so you might be thinking, well, is it going to just slip on south of Hispaniola here and into the Western Caribbean? I would say that's unlikely at this point because we do still have this northeastern part to deal with. As we just saw, the trough axis extends quite far over the U.S. Virgin Islands, and we do have convection up here, and uh, this is going to continue rotating over, and as it rotates over, it's likely to suck the southern part up toward it. So what we're likely to see is this part kind of comes northwest, this part comes west, and the two kind of meet in the middle here. And at some point overnight and tomorrow morning, we will likely see a more compact circulation trying to form near the tip of the Dominican Republic or just north thereof. Exactly where? Uh, you know, it could be plus or minus 50 miles. We'll have to see. It'll matter a lot for what happens with its interaction with Hispaniola. And that will be an important detail going forward because this is a large wave envelope and it's about to interact with one of the tallest land masses in the Atlantic Basin with very tall mountains here that has disrupted and even destroyed many a hurricane or tropical storm that has tracked over such mountains. In this case, we've seen PTC-9 or Future Isaias here uh, fail to develop quickly. Some models already had a strong storm northeast of Puerto Rico at this time. We don't really have that, so we're not guaranteeing that track to the north of Hispaniola, and we've also retained a larger size. As soon as this forms, it will likely start shrinking in size, but right now, 
uh, it has not formed yet and is quite large. So if you just transpose this, translate it over the island, the circulation is actually bigger than Hispaniola itself. And so if you imagine it now centered over Hispaniola, the wind field could be circulating more or less around the island. And uh, this means that not all of its energy is going to be destroyed by the mountains and part of it will remain over water. Because this is the case, uh, we might have a natural focusing of the circulation toward the northern coast of the Dominican Republic because if the wind has trouble flowing over the mountains, it'll be quite light here, but very strong east wind will exist here offshore on the north side of the wave axis. And so we might get some natural spin, natural vorticity along the northern coast of the Dominican Republic that may cause the wave to tighten up there. Um, and this is something we'll have to keep an eye on. It's not guaranteed. Interactions with Hispaniola are quite complex and can be a little uncertain. But the fact that this is broad and weak actually may uh, increase the odds that this is not destroyed by a passage over Hispaniola. And that's no longer really expected by many models today. And speaking of model guidance, we've seen a couple of changes. This is the European model. Um, initialized this morning showing that broad wave envelope and by tomorrow morning Thursday morning you can see that it has a tightening center just near the uh, eastern tip of the Dominican Republic uh, but you can see the broader wave envelope within which that is embedded moving over the island uh, pretty directly now similar to what I uh, was mentioning just there about scooting the coast of the northern Dominican Republic we kind of get that on the euro and this scoots off into the Bahamas and actually strengthens rather quickly and becomes a, a strong tropical storm in the Turks and Caicos on the Euro. This is in stark contrast to prior runs of this model which failed to develop any closed circulation or if it did it was quite weak and was not not this strong. Uh, this is in agreement with some other models like the GFS and the H wharf which have been showing at least some kind of tropical storm in the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas on most of their recent runs. And this is the H-Wharf's depiction of that situation showing here the mid-level moisture envelope tonight. And then as we go forward, it eventually focuses here near the northern coast of the Dominican Republic and then moves off into the Turks and Caicos where this would be probably a strong tropical storm on this model. And considering that the European model is now also showing something similar, uh, it does show perhaps a little bit of a trend toward the possibility of a stronger storm or at least a strengthening tropical storm heading into the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos is something to be prepared for if you live in the island chain as many of the tracks are right over this chain of islands and it could be something that's generating a little bit more wind by this time. Uh, if we look at the GFS this is also kind of a similar story a little bit weaker uh, but showing what would be a stronger tropical storm uh, than it is now over the island chain. But one thing you'll notice on both of these models is that the moisture field is quite asymmetric where these dark greens deep moisture mostly on the northeast side on both the H wharf and the GFS and this is true on the European as well although I can't show it here. And uh, this is because of the southwesterly wind shear that we've been talking about trying to push dry air into the southwest side of the storm. So as you see this go into the Bahamas you'll note the browns start to encroach on the southwest side of the storm on the H wharf and it really struggles to intensify on the H wharf in the Bahamas because of this. And we've talked over the last couple of days about how uh, Isaias will face uh, hurdles. Uh, even if it avoids most of the land masses of Hispaniola and Cuba, it will still face hurdles in the form of wind shear, which we can see on the GFS Ensemble uh, upper level wind forecast. Uh, this is for 12Z Thursday, so tomorrow morning, showing the storm near the Dominican Republic at that time and this upper level trough to its northwest trying to generate the southwest flow uh, that will cause shear over it. And if we go forward to the uh, Saturday morning plot, the storm has moved into the Bahamas and uh, this trough uh, is now over the Gulf, but it is imparting this south or south-southwest flow over the storm and uh, because the low level flow is still out of the east southeast pushing the storm toward Florida these two flows are out of different directions at different heights that's a wind shear that tends to tilt the vortex over and force dry air into the circulation and this continues to be in the forecast we talked about how if the storm is stronger uh, during its journey north of the Dominican Republic and into the Bahamas it may be able to push this trough out of the way a little bit more effectively and be less uh, or be less susceptible to the shear. 
that may happen to an extent, but the fact that we've seen development delayed thus far implies that we're not going to have a very strong storm near Puerto Rico as it comes west-northwest, and therefore it has less time to nudge that trough out of the way, even if it gets strong in the Bahamas. So right now, it looks like the consensus is that there will be at least some shear here, and that's likely to put a damper on how much this can intensify. That doesn't mean it can't be a strong tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane, but it's unlikely to completely explode on us in the Bahamas and become a major hurricane or anything like that. Uh, if we look at the following, uh, or the end of the weekend rather, a couple of days later, uh, assuming this comes up east of Florida, which is not something we can safely assume yet, but on the, G on the GFS ensemble this happens, we start to think about what could happen farther down the road uh, early next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If this turns northward east of Florida, it will have time over water, and this large upper trough over the Mississippi Valley is going to turn this toward the north and northeast, potentially into the rest of the eastern seaboard. That's something we're going to have to start keeping an eye on here uh, if you live uh, in this part of the country, something to start watching. And uh, the shear uh, is a little bit less detrimental at this point uh, because the upper level flow is out of the south or southwest, and now the low level steering flow is also out of a similar direction. So the shear would be a little less detriment detrimental in this scenario, and the storm might be able to strengthen as it heads up toward the rest of the eastern seaboard. So we're not quite there yet. A lot of questions to be answered before that part, but it is at this point only about four or five days away before we have to consider this. So if you live in the eastern US, just keep an eye on this. This is the official track forecast from NHC showing uh, the tropical storm warnings in blue, first of all, continuing for uh, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and parts of Haiti, and also now in the Turks and Caicos and Southeast Bahamas and uh, we'll continue to see watches and warnings spread throughout the rest of these islands uh, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, you can see that the track uh, officially takes it over the Dominican Republic and then toward the Florida Keys. Now, uh, last night's forecast was actually farther left and even over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, all the models I just showed you do have this tracking east of Florida. There are some models I didn't show you that still have it going farther to the left and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico like the UK Met. And some of the ensemble members from the models are still farther left with this. Keep in mind, it's still not impossible for this storm to move far enough to the left that it moves over not only Hispaniola, but also Cuba, and has significant trouble organizing into a tight circulation. Uh, some of the re most recent model runs do favor a stronger storm coming up into the Bahamas like this, uh, but there's an equal possibility well, maybe not equal, but there is still a possibility there that this really struggles to stay away from land. And uh, that's something to uh, keep in mind, that this forecast still has uncertainty. We do not have a tropical storm yet with a compact, well-identifiable center of circulation. And until we have that, some of these shifts back and forth, you know, 50, 100 miles, could matter a lot in terms of the future of the storm because of all the land masses in the way and its broad structure that has yet to consolidate and reveal to us how the storm is likely to behave going forward. We've talked over the last couple of videos about how Thursday is likely when we'll know what's going to happen when we see this near the Dominican Republic. We'll see what it looks like. We're not quite there yet. It's still Wednesday. Tomorrow we'll hopefully have some more answers as to how future Tropical Storm Isaias uh, will evolve. Until then, Keep an eye on things and be ready, prepared for a potential storm in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos as warnings are going up for you there. And impacts to Hispaniola and Cuba in the form of flash flooding will be, as always, a huge concern with any tropical system nearby. And then in Florida, again, not currently expecting a super strong storm, and it's possible the track will stay offshore, but it's also very possible that it will come onshore and bring impacts to the peninsula, and that's likely to occur if it does on Saturday and Sunday. So do have a hurricane plan just in case it comes our way in Florida, and be prepared and listen to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.